Freemasonry teaches that Jesus is not an important part of the Bible therefore all references to Jesus is removed from their Bible let me say that by no means am I trying to attack or demean the precious men who have pledged their allegiance or their loyalty to the great architect of the universe and to the lodge around the world. But equally, I think I must say that the great architect of the universe as known by Freemasonry is not Almighty God. Because according to Freemasonry, and again, I want to remind men involved in Freemasonry that you might not know a lot of what I am saying because you are in the first or the second or the three degrees. These things were brought forth by men who have been there and done that and found the evil when they reached all the way up on the top. The great architect of the universe, according to the doctrine of Freemasonry, is the worship of the sun, nature. It involves astrology, divination, which are things the Holy Bible condemns very strongly. As Christianity has its Messiah, to be Jesus Christ. So, Freemasonry has its own Messiah by the name of Hiram Abif. Most men involved in Freemasonry have no idea what they have gotten into and how demonic the lodge truly is. By the way, where, where is the mobile camera? Is it still functioning? Could you bring it here for a short moment? We had a lot of comments about my rings on the last um, part one of Freemasonry. And I just want to show you my rings for all you skeptics out there in the world. That what my rings have has nothing to do with the occult and worse Freemasonry. So if I can get that here. While we're waiting on that camera, can I have the two books on the screen, Richard, please? Also, I want you to know that there are two very powerful books of uh, ex-Freemasons uh, f- at the highest levels that you might want to read to remove the skepticism and think that I am judging and condemning. You have this one that is called Unmasking Freemasonry. They're available on Amazon. Let me have a picture of the other one. You have 30. Three degrees of deception. Those of you that are watching around the world, purchase these on Amazon and remove the skepticism and you thinking that I am judging and condemning you. But here is my ring. I love them. I hope you can see that clearly. This ring is the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ and it is empty because the Lord Jesus is risen. My second ring is the shield of faith. The Bible tells us, take up the shield of faith. Praise the Lord. I hope that's enough for you. Because if I was a Freemason, I would not be here standing talking about what's wrong with it. Some Freemason has a lot of pagan gods involved in it. One of the most prevalent, powerful ones is called Jabalon. Jabalon is a combination of three different gods, Jehovah, Baal, and Osiris. Jehovah meaning Almighty God from the Christians. Baal, the Canaanite god, 
Osiris, the Egyptian god. But I want to remind Masons that our God, the Christian God, Almighty God, shares His glory with no one. He will not share His glory with us, Osiris or Baal. These are pagan, demonic gods. The glory of God belongs to Him alone, and He alone is supposed to be worshipped. In Isaiah 48 and verse 2, it says, I am the Lord, that is my name, and my glory I will not give to another, nor my praise to carved images. Whenever false gods are honored and worshipped, the result is always deception. The funny thing about deception is that it blinds the individual from truth, yet it makes the individual think they have the truth. In 2 Timothy 3.5, it says, Having a form of godliness, but denying its power, and from such people turn away. Masons, who claim themselves also to be Christians, have a form of religion, but deny the power of God. Because Jabulun keeps the mason from knowing the truth. It blinds them. Religion will always blind the person so that they can never go deeper with God. Some of the terms used in the lodge are worshipful master, worshipful lodge. I want to remind every person, according to God, the God of Christianity, no one in the universe should ever appropriate the word master. It belongs to the Lord Jesus Christ. The term worshipful master in Freemasonry is suggesting that the person that holds that chair, that office is deserving of worship. Jesus alone is deserving of worship. Worshipful lodge suggests that the lodge is deserving of worship because of its teaching. Again, only the Lord God deserves worship. From the very beginning, Actually, before the world was created, Lucifer, who is the God of Freemasonry, wanted to overthrow God to receive worship. Then in the Bible, he appeared again to Jesus and wanted worship from Jesus. And so, it is no light thing that even today he is still demanding worship in whichever way he can get it. Freemason is a secret society. Well, it was secret up until around the 1930s. After the kidnapping and murder of Captain Morgan in 1826, and after his book was written exposing the dark secrets of Freemasonry, he was murdered for becoming an anti-Mason and exposing it. The court then ordered a thorough investigation and ordered that all the beliefs, practices, and rituals of Freemasonry be made public knowledge. And so it was. As a matter of fact, all that I am sharing with you today is public information. It's accessible today because of the murder of Captain Morgan. The court ordered that all the secret information become public. So I'm not teaching you anything that is hidden. In Matthew 10, 27 and 28, Jesus said, whatever I tell you in the dark, speak in the light. Whatever you hear in the air, preach on the housetops. Christianity has no secrets. Everything is available to everyone. In Acts chapter 5 and verse 20, 
Go stand in the temple and speak to all the people all the words of this life. Christianity holds no secret. It's for everyone who wants Jesus Christ. So really, there has to be something that is wrong with any organization that holds secrets from people. Now let's look at some doctrines of Freemasonry and Christianity. We're going to compare them. First of all, salvation. Freemasonry, salvation is by works. Depending on one's own virtuous life to redeem itself. But then let me be fair with you. Every other religion on this earth, except Christianity, teaches that you can earn your salvation by good works. So I don't want you to think that it's only Freemasonry, but Freemasonry teaches that you can earn your salvation by good works. Christianity teaches salvation is by grace alone. Depending on the perfect life of Jesus and His atoning work or His atoning death on the cross. Then the subject of Jesus. Christianity teaches the following about Jesus Christ. Jesus is God. And completely separate from creation. Christianity teaches Jesus is divine. Eternal. The second person of the Godhead. Christianity teaches that when Jesus was on earth, He was God incarnate. Meaning, He was fully God and fully man at the same time. Jesus, Christianity teaches, is the only means of redemption for fallen mankind. Concerning the topic of Jesus, Freemasonry teaches Jesus is no greater than Aristotle, Plato, Krishna, Mohammed, Buddha, or Joseph Smith. In upcoming teachings, I'll be teaching you about cults around the world, mainstream religions. And you'll find out that all cults demote Jesus Christ. Christianity exalts Jesus Christ. Concerning Jesus, Freemason teaches Jesus is not divine. And certainly not the only means of redemption for lost mankind. Freemasonry teaches Jesus is the son of Joseph and not the son of God. Freemasons, for Freemasonry, Masons meet to commemorate the death of Jesus, not the way Christians do, we celebrate the death of Jesus as victory over the devil. But Masons gather to celebrate the death of Jesus as the end of his existence, not his divinity. Come Easter, Holy Thursday, Masons celebrate Black Communion where the death of Christ is mentioned as Him being none inspired or none divine, everyone dresses in black robes. Again, I want to remind our viewers, especially Masons that may be watching at this moment, you may not be there yet in your degrees, but rest assured, if you are one of the Masons that choose to climb higher into the degrees, you will see that everything that I am saying is true. The topic of the Holy Bible. Christianity teaches the Bible is the only revelation of and from 
the only true God. Christianity teaches the Bible is inspired and preserved by God Himself. Christianity teaches the Bible is the only valid rule of faith and final authority for His people. Concerning the Bible, the Holy Bible, Freemasonry teaches the Bible of the Christians is merely one of the holy book of man. Freemasonry teaches the Bible is no better than the Quran, or the Chinese, or the Hindu, or the Greek Bibles. Concerning the Bible, Freemasonry teaches the Bible is not to be taken literally because it's esoteric, meaning it's obscure and it's mysterious. Concerning the Bible, Freemasonry teaches that Jesus is not an important part of the Bible Therefore, all references to Jesus is removed from their Bible. Concerning the Bible, Masonry is actually based on the Kabbalah, the book of ma magic and mysticism, not the Holy Bible. Even though the Holy Bible is found in their midst, that is not the direction for their lives. The topic of God. Christianity teaches the following about God. God is spirit. Eternal. Self-existent. Unchanging. God is almighty. All-knowing. And sovereign. Christianity teaches God is existing in three persons. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Brothers and sisters, Christians listening around the world, it is vitally important that you learn the doctrines of the Christian faith. Because if you do not learn the doctrines of the Christian faith, you will be carried away with the doctrines of deception. Concerning God. Freemasonry teaches God is basically whatever you perceive Him to be. And that's why Jesus is taken out of their Bible. Because Jesus is exclusive. He's absolute. When He is removed, God can then be anything. Freemasonry teaches that our idea or concept of God becomes our God. Now you think about it. And I am not saying this to condemn, judge, or demean any Mason. There are millions and millions of Masons in the world. Each one of them came with a different background, different belief, and they all become a part of free Masonry. And they come with their own ideas. And whatever you may believe God is, that is God. And by the way, that's the direct hidden meaning of the great architect of the universe. It's what you make him to be. But those who pursue higher levels in Freemasonry learn that this architect is the nature, the sun with its life-giving powers and erected, sorry to say this again, penis symbolizing fertility. The topic of redemption. Christianity teaches concerning redemption all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Christianity teaches concerning redemption, our righteousness 
is a filthy rag in comparison with the righteousness of God. Can I have your attention for a short moment? In the Hebrew, the original language of the Old Testament, this word, filthy rag, and you'll have to forgive me for saying this, but in the meaning of filthy rag in the Hebrew language, as it is written, means the menstrual pad of a female. The Bible compares our own righteousness as filthy rags in comparison to the righteousness of God. Concerning redemption, Christianity teaches Jesus laid down His sinless life to make atonement for our sins. Concerning redemption, Christianity teaches by faith in Jesus and His provision for us, we can be made righteous or the righteousness of God. We can have everlasting life through Jesus Christ. We can become a part of the family of God and there is absolutely no other way. That's what the Bible, Christianity, teaches concerning redemption. Now let's take a look at what Freemasonry teaches about redemption. Redemption is a matter of self-improvement. Redemption, self-improvement, comes by enlightenment and you move step as you move step by step up to the 33 degrees of freemasonry that's how you redeem yourself that's how you make yourself better according to freemasonry concerning redemption again concerning redemption freemasonry teaches morality and good works as defined by Masonic laws is redeeming yourself. Again, the Holy Bible is used in Freemasonry, but it's not the Holy Bible that teaches Freemasons or Masons what redemption is. It is the law of morality according to Freemasonry. Concerning redemption, Freemasonry teaches reincarnation. What does that mean? After death, the soul becomes transmigrated into a newborn baby or an animal to finish its process of immortality onto perfection. The Bible teaches just the opposite. The Bible says it is appointed for man to die once and then comes judgment. Concerning Satan, Christianity teaches the following concerning Satan. Satan is a proud, rebellious, fallen angel. Satan is created by God as Lucifer, not as Satan. Christianity teaches concerning Satan. Satan is the father of lies, the accuser of the brethren, a deceiver, a tempter, and the ruler of the kingdom of darkness. If anyone wants to learn anything about Satan. There is no book on Amazon that is better than the Holy Bible. From the beginning in Genesis to the end in the book of Revelation, Scripture clearly and explicitly defines who Satan is. And why can it be trusted? Because God created Satan. The Holy Bible is inspired by God and who would know Satan better than God? 
So I would like to advise all our viewers, if you want to learn more about Satan, more about Lucifer, open the Holy Bible. But I mean the Christian Holy Bible. Start from the beginning to the end. You're going to walk away with a picture of Lucifer and of Satan like you've never known him before. He will not be able to trick you anymore. He'll not be able to lie to you anymore. Christianity teaches that Satan blinds the lost to the glorious light of the precious gospel of Jesus Christ. Christianity teaches concerning Satan, Satan came to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But Jesus came to destroy the works of Satan. My brothers and my sisters, Masons around the world and here in Belize, who would you attribute all the crime? Who would you attribute all the problems in the homes of families? Who would you say is the person behind LGBTQ all the way to Z? It's certainly not God. If you go back to the first book of the Bible, the Bible created the family structure, the unit, the way God intended it male and female and all the pain and suffering in the world today Christianity teaches it is because Satan comes to steal to kill and to destroy but thank God Christianity also teaches that Jesus Christ came to destroy the works of the enemy and let me tell you something my friends Jesus destroyed the works of the enemy when you become a Christian a genuine Christian Satan is done for Concerning Satan, Freemasonry teaches Satan as opposing God does not exist. What a mockery. Freemason teaches concerning Satan that man made this up. This is a myth. Satan is only doing what God instructs him to do. Well, well, well. The devil is a bad dude, whether you want to call him Lucifer, Lucifer, or whatever, Sefer. He is bad to the core. And by the way, he ain't no Lucifer anymore. He is Satan. He was Lucifer before he fell from, or maybe I should say, before he was thrown out of heaven. But the truth is, is that Satan is not doing what God tell him to do. He never did what God told him to do. Freemasonry teaches that the Christian view of Satan is a distortion of the truth about Lucifer who is the light bearer who is actually good and the instrument of liberty. Now you see, the reason why people would swallow I mean swallow Lucifer being the light bearer that he is good and that he is an instrument of liberty is because they have no, never known Jesus Christ the Bible says in the book of Corinthians that the veil is lifted when we come to Jesus Christ when you come to Jesus Christ you understand that Jesus is the light bearer Jesus is the one that came to set the captives free Jesus is the one that is good. Again, the book of Corinthians teaches us that Satan, or if you want to call him Lucifer, he transforms himself into an angel of light. But my brothers and my sisters, masons around the world, I am not here standing, judging and condemning. But the Bible tells us that there is coming a day when God will judge the works of man. He will judge this world. And guess by who? It's not by anyone else and certainly not Hiram Abiff. He's going to judge this world by Jesus Christ. The one who died and rose again. 
See, I stand here today telling you the truth. Because it is not my de desire for you to end up in hell. There is only an entrance and no exit in hell. It's time to learn the truth. Concerning spiritual light and darkness. Christianity teaches the following. Jesus is the light of the world. Those who follow him shall not walk in darkness. That came from the lips of Jesus himself. Christianity teaches concerning spiritual light and darkness. Jesus and Jesus alone is the only source of spiritual enlightenment. That tells us then that witchcraft is not enlightenment. That tells us then that the occult is not enlightenment. That tells us then that Freemasonry is not enlightenment. Jesus Christ is the only true enlightenment. Concerning spiritual light and darkness, Freemasonry teaches the following. All profane people who are none masons including godly genuine christians are wretched blind and lost in complete spiritual darkness well may i say to you and i do not say this in any form of pride but gratitude if by me submitting my life to Jesus Christ makes me, and please listen carefully, makes me completely lost and wretched, then I am the most wretched of you all. I am the most wretched because I have put my faith completely in the Lord Jesus Christ. My life has never been the same. Concerning spiritual light and darkness, Freemasonry teaches that only initiation into the degrees and mysteries of Masonry will bring them out of darkness into the light. So, if by chance you never become a mason, you are in darkness for all eternity. Concerning spiritual light and darkness, Freemasonry teaches, Freemason is the thing that can cleanse you and impart new life to you. Well, what an apparent stealing from Scripture because... Jesus is the only one that cleanses. He's the only one that washes. And the only one that imparts new life. Concerning the topic of prayer. Christianity teaches prayer is to be made to our heavenly father. Concerning prayer. Christianity teaches prayer is to be prayed in the name of Jesus Christ alone. Concerning prayer, Christianity teaches prayer is to be prayed in the power and inspired by the Holy Spirit. Christianity teaches concerning prayer that only through the mediatory office of Jesus can we approach the throne of God in prayer. Any and every other means of a mediator is false, hopeless, and useless. Concerning prayer, Freemasonry teaches prayers are to be offered to a deity. Again, that deity is whatever you suppose him to be whatever you suppose that deity to be you pray to that deity 
You know, brothers and sisters, full force, quickly. We are approaching the very, very close era when there will be a one world religion. And this is it right here that is starting. Concerning prayer, Freemasonry teaches that the great architect of the universe is that deity. Now remember, the great architect of the universe for the Mason, not for Freemasonry, because there are doctrines of Freemasonry, but presented to the Mason, the great architect of the universe is whoever that Mason claims him to be. Concerning prayer, Freemasonry teaches that prayers are to be universal in nature so as not to offend anyone. You know, Jesus came to this earth over 2,000 years ago and he was a huge offense, offense to this world and still is. And that's why Jesus is removed because it's too exclusive, it's too absolute, and not everybody wants that. But Freemasonry teaches that prayers are to be universal and not to Jesus Christ. You don't want to offend anyone. Even as I stand here today teaching this message, I am an offense to thousands of people. But more important to me is that I am never an offense to my Lord Jesus Christ. Freemasonry teaches that when you close your prayer, your prayers are never to be ended with Amen like the Bible teaches. It is supposed to be ended with So mote it be. Interesting to note is the fact that in Satanism, witchcraft, sorcery, and similar abominations to God, they all end their prayer with so mote it be. Truthfulness. Christianity teaches concerning truthfulness we must speak the truth of all time at all times now let, let me just interject here quickly by no means am i saying suggesting that christians say the truth all the time what i am saying is doctrinally christianity teaches that christians are supposed to say the truth all the time Freemasonry teaches concerning truthfulness. It is right to lie if necessary to protect the secrets of the lodge or to protect the wrongdoings of another Mason. That's the only time you should lie. Secrecy. Christianity teaches there are no secrets in the kingdom of God. There are mysteries, but no secrets. And when you get closer to the Lord, the Holy Spirit reveals the mysteries of God. Freemasonry concerning secrecy teaches, secrecy is the essence of Freemasonry. Necessary for its existence, and protected by blood oaths. The topic of exclusiveness. Christianity teaches the life, knowledge, wisdom, and freedom offered by God in Christ are for whoever will come to Him. In example, Jesus said in Matthew eleven twenty eight, 28, Come to me, 
all you who labor, burdened and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Freemasonry teaches concerning exclusiveness. The light of Freemasonry is for the elite initiates only. Now let's quickly take a look at the blood death oaths. I'll only take three of them because I want to show you some sicknesses associated, diseases, curses associated with these blood death oaths. Meaning the penalty for breaking the oath is death or bloodshed. I want to clarify by no means when I use the term blood oath am I suggesting blood covenant. Do Masons do blood covenant? I will be truthful with you. I do not know a hundred percent but what I do know is a blood oath is not a blood covenant like what witches would do. When a mason takes a blood oath in each degree, they are actually consenting to either of two things or both things. Number one, that if they break the oath of secrecy, another mason will shed their blood because they should never break it. Secondly, you being a mason, when you make blood oaths, you are actually consenting to the fact that if another mason opens up and tells the secrets, that you will have to shed their blood as what happened with Captain Morgan. For every degree of oath you take, and break there is an affliction to the body and sickness to the family members there is a blood death oath for each of the 33 degrees of Freemasonry by taking the oath the Mason is putting himself in an unknowing bind he is committing to torture, mutilation, and murder of any other mason who violates the oath. The oath of obligation is designed to instill fear in the initiate to bind him tightly to the organization. Here is something else, and again I'll teach you this when I talk more about cults. Christianity is the only, and I use the term loosely, religion. Christianity is the only religion, and the reason I say loosely is because Christianity is not a religion. It's a relationship with Christ. But just so that you can understand. Christianity is the only religion that draws people to Jesus by faith and not by fear. Every other religion on earth uses some form of fear to hold their people to their religion. And so does Freemasonry. Christianity. Christians are never to take oaths at all, much less blood oaths. And I have the scriptures there for you, for your own reference at home. Freemasonry, blood oaths are administered at the end of initiation into all Masonic degrees. The penalty for breaking the secrets for the first initiation known as entered apprentice, the first degree is binding myself under no less a penalty than having my throat cut across and my tongue torn out by its root and buried in the rough sands of the sea. Now, 
This is not for carnal minds. This is for spiritual minds. Carnal minds will never understand the godly spiritual world or the things of scripture. It takes a spiritual mind, a rebirth in Jesus Christ. When a Freemason or a Mason takes this oath, blood oath of secrecy, it launches a curse into the family of diseases known as goiters, thyroid problems, throat problems, sinusitis, allergies, asthma, tumors, and the list continue. They don't know this. We as Christians being taught by God's word knows the curse of witchcraft. And because the oath is taken at the throat, these diseases and sicknesses are launched into family members. And most family members of Freemason don't even know anything about these things because these things are secrets. Blood oath, degree number two. The penalty for breaking the secrets for the second initiation known as fellowcraft. The Mason takes the oath by saying to have my left breast torn open and my heart plucked out and my heart given to the wild beasts of the field and the fowls of the air. Now I underlined for you on your outline the words wild beasts and fowls of the air. Because lo and behold, in scripture, wild beasts and fowls of the air are direct references to Satan. Yet the oath is taken by the mason saying to have my heart given to the wild beasts and the, of the field and the fowls of the air. When that oath is taken, the family members such as the wives and children of masons receive curses of a heart attack in the family, heart pains, death, lung problems, and spiritually, emotional hardness towards God, reading the Bible, but difficulty believing it. These curses are launched when a mason takes the second blood oath in that degree. Blood oath, degree three. The penalty for breaking the secrets for the third initiation known as master mason. The mason is made to say this oath that if I break this secrecy to have my body cut in two and my bowels removed and burned to ashes to be scattered to the four winds of heaven. When that oath is taken into the bloodline, descendants not even yet born will have the curse of the following sickness and diseases. Problems with their esophagus. Problems with their stomach. Problems with their kidneys. With their livers. We, and I don't mean livers in the sense a person has two. I mean livers as in lots of people. Problems in their colon. Fibroids. Tumors. Many times we wonder where all these sicknesses, these diseases come from. I'm showing them to you today. These are curses that come into the bloodline because of blood oaths taken by masons in our bloodline. And may I just say this before I continue? Because Freemasonry has been around for centuries and centuries, 
it is almost assured that somehow in one way or the other, almost each and every one of us have someone in our bloodline that was a part of Freemasonry. Because it is so all-encompassing. Also because of being hit in the head. One of those books I showed you at the beginning of this teaching will explain this to you. The Freemason in one of these degrees, I think it was the second one or the third. They're actually hit in the forehead with a maul that has a cushion on it. And they're hit hard. So hard that some of the men actually pass out for a moment. Block out. Well, what happens there is that with that infliction, curses are launched into the family, wives and children, sicknesses, diseases of migraines, mind fog, memory loss, brain tumors, mental disorders, mental torment, stroke, blood hemorrhaging. Because of that hit. Now you see again, Masons do not understand because they don't necessarily know what's behind all of these practices. But Christianity teaches us from the Bible what happens with these things. And thank God for the Holy Bible. And I want to tell the world, open the Holy Bible and start to read it. Ignorance will flee. After becoming a master mason, there are either of two paths to follow. Meaning after you have taken the third degree, you are now given the choice to either go into the Scottish Rite or into the York right. Both of them have the other 29 degrees to take you to the 32nd degree. Each degree requires blood oaths that sends curses of trouble and sickness into family members. Other diseases, curses sent upon family members are as follows. Let me clarify something quickly. When I say that these diseases are sent into family members, I am by no mean, means saying that Masons or Freemasonry is sending these diseases into family members. What I'm saying is, is that because it is involved in the darkness of pagan gods, Beyond their own knowledge, as the Bible teaches, demons take these practices and launches these diseases and sicknesses into family members. So please understand, I am not saying that masons are kneeling down, sending these diseases into people. It's demons that do these things because of the practices. So other diseases associated with the other degrees in Freemason would be psoriasis of the skin, Alzheimer's disease, eye problems of every kind, deafness, asthma, hay fever, barrenness, miscarriages, bulimia, anorexia, self-destruction, suicide, heart pain, chest pain, mutilation, insanity, mental problems, dyslexia, molestation, difficulty finding a job, fear of the following, fear of death, fear of heart attacks, fear of the dark, 
fear of failure, fear of cancer, fear of rape, fear of rejection. Spiritually, some of these curses include blaspheming God. For Christians who are involved in masonry, Freemasonry, difficulty receiving the baptism of the Holy Spirit as a Christian. Deception into cults, poor relationships with earthly father or stepfather, secretiveness, meaning you're suffering, but you tell nobody about what you're going through. Also, murderous thoughts. And my brothers and my sisters and masons watching from around the world, this is just the tip of the iceberg. For more, for your own knowledge and your own benefit of freedom, you can go and search those two books. And there are many, many other books. Take the liberty to go and do so, so that you can find freedom for yourself. The following prayer is a lengthy prayer. But that's because Freemasonry is very complex. Dark secrets. That many Masons will never know. I want to ask you at this moment to put down your outline. And I'm going to lead you in this prayer. It's a lengthy prayer. But if you pray this from your heart. What you are doing. Because I believe you told me. None of you are involved in Freemasonry. But you don't know who in your bloodline. And I get, I, again, I guarantee you, somebody in your bloodline somewhere was involved in Freemasonry. And what you're going to do in this prayer is you're going to be loosing and breaking every attachment that you are involved with, un, even unknowing and against your will because of your bloodline. So I'd like to ask you at this moment to bow your head. Close your eyes. And I want you to pray this prayer with me. Don't become tired. Those of you around the world and across Belize, pray this prayer with me. Father God, creator of heaven and earth, I come to you in the name of Jesus Christ, your son. I come as a sinner seeking forgiveness and cleansing from all sins committed against you. I honor my earthly father and mother and all my ancestors of flesh and blood and of the spirit by adoption and godparents. But I utterly turn away from and renounce all their sins. I forgive all my ancestors for the effects of their sins on me and my children. I confess, say it, I confess and renounce all of my own sins, known and unknown. I renounce and rebuke Satan and every spiritual power of his affecting me and my family. In the name of Jesus Christ, true, holy, creator God. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, in accordance with Jude 8 through 10. Psalms 82 and verse 1 and 2 Chronicles chapter 18. I request you to move aside all celestial beings, including principalities, powers and rulers, and to forbid them to harass, intimidate, 
or retaliate against me and all participants in this teaching today. I also ask that you would prevent these beings of whatever rank to not be permitted to send any level of spiritual evil as retaliation against any of us here or our families or ministries or possessions. I renounce and annul every covenant made with death by my ancestors or myself, including every agreement made with Sheol. And I renounce the refuge of lies and falsehoods which have been hidden behind. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I renounce and forsake all involvement in Freemasonry or any other lodge, craft, or occultism by my ancestors and myself. I also renounce and break the code of silence enforced by Freemasonry and the occult on my family and me. I renounce and repent of all pride and arrogance which opened the door for the slavery and bondage of Freemasonry to afflict me and my family. I now shut every door of witchcraft and deception operating in my life and seal it, close it with the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. I renounce every covenant every blood covenant and every alliance with Freemasonry, all the spiritual powers behind it, made by my family or me. In the name of Jesus Christ, I rebuke, renounce, and bind witchcraft, the principal spirit behind Freemasonry. And I renounce and rebuke Baphomet, the spirit of Antichrist and all the spirits of death and deception. I renounce and rebuke the spirit of Fides, the Roman goddess of fidelity that seeks to hold all Masonic and occultic participants and their descendants in bondage. And I ask the one true holy creator God to give me the gift of faith to believe in the true Lord Jesus Christ as described in the word of God. I also renounce and rebuke the spirit of prostitution which the word of God says has led many members of Masonic and other occultic organizations astray and cause them to become unfaithful to the one true and holy God. I now choose to return and become faithful to the God of the Bible, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, the Father of the Lord Jesus Christ, who I now declare is my Lord and Savior. I renounce the insecurity, the love of position and power, the love of money or greed, and the pride which would have led my ancestors into Freemasonry. I renounce all the fears which held them in Freemasonry, especially 
the fears of death, the fears of men, and fears of trusting in the name of Jesus Christ. I renounce every position held in the lodge by any of my ancestors or myself, including Grand Master, Worshipful Master, or any other occultic title. I renounce the calling of any man, Master, for the Lord Jesus Christ is my only Master and Lord. And He forbids anyone else having that title. I renounce the entrapment of others into Freemasonry and observing the helplessness of others during the rituals. I renounce the effects of Freemasonry passed on to me through any female ancestor who felt distrusted and rejected by her husband as he entered and attended any lodge and refused to tell her of his secrets. I also renounce all obligations, oaths, curses, and iniquities enacted by every female member of my family through any direct membership of all women's orders of Freemasonry. The order of the Eastern Star or any other Masonic or occultic organization. Take a breath. We're almost done. Say this from your heart. You do not know the chains that are be being broken. You can't see them. But the Lord is freeing you and your descendants. I renounce the oaths taken and the curses and iniquity involved in the supreme third eye degree of Freemasonry. The Grand Sovereign Inspector General. I renounce the secret passwords. Demole, Hirumabif, Frederick of Prussia, Micah, Maka, Belim, and Adonai, and all their occult and Masonic meanings. I renounce all the obligations of every Freemasonry degree. And all penalties invoked. I renounce and utterly forsake the great architect of the universe. Who is revealed in this third degree as Lucifer. And his false claim to be the universal fatherhood of God. I reject the Masonic view of deity. Because it does not square with the revelation of the one true and holy creator, God of the Bible. I renounce the cable toe around the neck. I renounce the death wish that the wine drunk from a human skull should turn to poison. And the skeleton whose cold arms are invited if the oaths of this degree is violated. I renounce the three infamous assassins of the Grand Master. Law, property, and religion. And the greed and witchcraft involved in the attempt to manipulate and control the rest of mankind. In the name of God the Father. Jesus Christ the Son. And the Holy Spirit. I renounce and break the curses. And iniquities. Involved in the idolatry. Blasphemy. Secrecy. 
and deception of Freemasonry at every level. I renounce the pantheism and the ancient and accepted right of English and American Freemasonry and the atheism of Grand Orient Freemasonry. I appropriate the blood of Jesus Christ to cleanse all the consequences of these from my life. I now revoke all previous consent given by any of my ancestors or, my, or myself to be deceived in the name of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. If anything has ever been tied to you from Freemasonry in your bloodline, in the name of Jesus, it's broken. It's gone. The diseases now can be taken authority over and leave the body and all the troubles of the family with the family members of Masons. Would you stand with me? Thank you, Jesus. Let's take a short moment to pray for Masons around the world. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to you. Lord, you love all people. All people, even those who are not saved. Lord, you love Masons. Your plan for them is the same plan that you have for us. We pray, Lord, that instead of taking offense, that Masons would find the true light that Freemasonry could never offer only the Lord Jesus Christ. We pray that salvation would come to them. We pray, Lord God, that they would be able to leave Freemasonry without being harmed. We thank you and we praise you in advance in the name of Jesus Christ. And everybody said, Amen. Amen.